The DC Rivals Hypercoaster, manufactured by Mock Rides, opened in 2017 at Warner Brothers Movie World in Gold Coast, Australia. Upon opening, it became the longest, tallest, and fastest roller coaster in the Southern Hemisphere. In this review, you'll hear my thoughts on this incredible coaster and why I consider it not only to be the best roller coaster in Australia, but a top 10 coaster in the whole world. When you approach Warner Brothers Movie World, this roller coaster is probably the first thing that you will see. Not only is it the largest ride at the park, both in height and length, completely towering over everything around it, but it is also situated at the front of the park along the parking lot as you enter. This has the benefit of offering excellent views of the coaster to incoming guests as you can see the whole layout without much obstruction. The track is painted a vibrant purple that really catches the eye with a joker face light show piece placed at the top of the lift hill. DC Rivals Hypercoaster is one of the marquee attractions at Warner Brothers Movie World and therefore the line gets busy fast. Thankfully, the queue is filled with plenty of theming, making up for the ride experience, as it depicts cool posters and various DC rivals, as well as informative descriptions about the characters. The operations I have experienced on the ride are a little slow, due to the ride restraints having a seat belt that needs to be inserted by the ride operators, but the seats and restraints are comfortable and offer a lot of freedom of movement. The seats are situated pretty high on the trains, so that my feet weren't touching the floor of the train when I was seated. The roller coaster seems to always be running at least two trains, so the line always feels like it's progressing forward. Now time for the ride experience. Upon dispatch, the train takes a slight right turn and heads up the 45 degree 202 foot or 61.6 meter lift hill. The train ascends up the lift hill and passes under the iconic Joker head. You crest over the top of the first drop and for a moment face down the near vertical twisting first drop, that is if you are seated anywhere but the last row, but we will get to that later. Riders plummet down the 195 foot or 59.4 meter drop as the train also rips riders on a hard twist to the right. The mix of steepness and the twist combine for an incredible and intense first drop that is lateral fueled ejector airtime. The drop feels long like a lot of hypercoasters and when you reach the pullout of the bottom and are pushed back into your seat, the train is whipping at full speed. 72 miles per hour or 115 kilometers per hour. The train rises back up and into an airtime filled camelback. You are shot out of your seat as you crest the peak and dive down it to the left. The train speeds out of the camelback and into a 130 foot, 40 meter non-inverting loop. I love these ride elements and I find them to be way more thrilling and enjoyable than regular loops. The positive forces in the entrance shift rapidly to lateral airtime as you get to the top and are flung above the loop and then back down into it. It is thrilling and wild, followed by strong positive forces against you as you exit the loop. The vehicle rises up a bank turn to the right, which is one of the only elements of the ride that is pretty forceless. It gives you as a rider a chance to catch your breath. You exit the turn, dropping back down to the ground, and then rise up into a stangle dive. The lateral shift at the top of the element into the drop is another lateral filled ejector moment. At the bottom of the element, the positive forces push you down into your seat as the train embarks on an upward bank turn to the right. As the ride starts to drop back to the ground, the track and train suddenly bank to the other direction, giving a whip of lateral ejector. The train takes a sharp left bank turn before rising up again. At the top of this hill, the train again slams you to a right bank, sending the riders through another intense jolt of lateral ejector airtime. You drop down and again rapidly shift to a bank to the left and into a large positive force filled angled helix. The train exits the helix and drops down a small hill to the left and rises up another. At the crest of this hill, the train again snaps riders to a bank on the other side and through a sharp turn to the left and then banks again and turns to the right. Now the ride hits a series of bunny hills similar to the end of a lot of hypercoasters. These all offer ample amounts of ejector airtime at each crest. After the second bunny hill, the train dives to the left and under the first drop and up one more bunny hill before rising to the brake run. That ends the ride experience on DC Rivals Hypercoaster. And what an incredibly fast paced and intense hypercoaster it is. There is no mid-course brake section, so the ride feels non-stop from first drop to finish. The ride is also very smooth and mixed with the comfortable restraints is a very pleasant ride experience. That description alone would warrant this roller coaster getting an excellent review and being up there with my favorite coasters of all time. But remember earlier when I said I would come back to talk about the last row of this coaster? 
There is a debate in the community of which seats are the best for roller coasters, and the debate is normally held between the front row or the back row, with few exceptions. Cough, cough, Magnum XL200. The back is normally the crazier and more thrilling ride experience, while the front offers the best visual experience of a roller coaster. For this coaster, with the only caveat to ride being an extra cost, the back row faces backwards. This is extraordinary. The whole ride experience is intense going forwards, but taking it on backwards in the back row is relentless. Not only do you have an unimpeded view of everything around you, but you have no anticipation for when elements are coming at you. This becomes apparent immediately on the lift hill, as the 45 degree ascent facing backwards starts to feel way more steep. You can't tell at all when you are nearing the top of the lift hill, when you start to pick up speed and get absolutely catapulted over the top of it. The twisting first drop is so intense in the back row facing backwards, is like the roller coaster is trying to rip you out of the train through the lap bar. The twisting ejector airtime in that position is unlike anything I have ever experienced on a ride. I have been on so many coasters that I don't often get the drop feeling anymore, but on this, my stomach was left at the top of the drop. The rest of the ride backwards is great too, and it is such an amazing thing that the people at this park decided to add this feature. With all that said, I give this ride an easy 10 pumpkins on the vine. It's got the complete package of thrills, pacing, and the backwards row completely brings it over the top. I hope more parks give mock rides a chance to flex their custom hyper coaster model, for if it is anything like this beast, it's going to be a worthwhile addition to any park. If you get out to Australia or are from Oz, I can't recommend going to this park and this ride enough. If you love roller coasters, this is an absolute must bucket list ride. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.